Hello girls, I hope you're staying safe at home. To continue with the chapter Aids to Health, today we are going to talk about vaccination and immunization. Now, what is vaccination? Actually, when you got yourself vaccinated, when you were little, what was put inside your body through the injection? It was not any medicine, but the germs or the germ substance was put into the body so that your body will develop resistance to a particular disease. Now this practice is known as prophylaxis and the material which was introduced into your body that is the germ, what is it known as? It is known as the vaccine. Now the vaccine or germ substance is you know it is introduced into the body by injection and sometimes even orally you must have heard about the polio drops that is given to little children below the age of five five and below the age of five okay so those are given in the form of drops so what happens once the vaccine or the germ goes inside the body it goes and stimulates the white blood cells to produce antibodies to fight against that particular disease so the terms vaccine and vaccination were actually used for vaccination against smallpox okay nowadays smallpox has been totally eradicated no one suffers from smallpox so vaccination was actually this term was used for vaccination against smallpox but nowadays it is used in a general way now there are four categories of vaccines which need to be introduced into our bodies first is killed germs example TAB vaccine for typhoid. Children, these names are very important. For typhoid is TAB. Salx vaccine for poliomyelitis. That is the drops that is given to the children. Okay. And the vaccine for rabies. That is for dog bite. These are killed germs. Because these germs are very, very dangerous. Even if one enters the body, it will cause havoc. Next is living weakened germs these germs are living but they have been made very very weak okay like example the vaccine for measles freeze-dried bcg vaccine for tuberculosis okay please remember the full form of bcg is bacillus calnut gurin now the name calnut and gurin are the name of two french workers who like developed this strain for vaccination and next is living fully poisonous germs that is they are like active okay example for smallpox in this vaccination a person is inoculated with cowpox virus that is the virus which causes uh, cowpox to cattle okay and this virus is very similar it is same to the smallpox virus okay so cowpox virus causes only a single pustule that is the blister to develop rather than multiple pustules of smallpox all over the body okay so vaccination against cowpox protects from smallpox as well but nowadays as i already told you smallpox has been totally eradicated the disease does not uh, uh, found it is not found these days so nowadays smallpox vaccination are no longer given now next what is introduced as a vaccine into our body is known as toxoids so what are toxoids you know these are poisonous substances but they are inactivated once toxoids become activated they turn into poison they turn into toxins and these toxoids remember children are secreted by the bacteria example diphtheria and tetanus so these toxins or poisons are made harmless by addition of dilute formalin yet it retains the capacity to produce antibodies or antitoxins once it enters our body now nowadays of course you know the latest um, everywhere in each and every country they're trying to make a vaccine for COVID-19 okay and of course till now there is no vaccine even for AIDS and it's been so many years uh, but yet no vaccine has been made for AIDS okay now the definition of vaccination and 
immunization they differ slightly so vaccination is the introduction of any kind of dead or weakened germs into the body of a living being to develop immunity or resistance against the respective disease or diseases so actually vaccination and immunization is the same thing but what do you mean by immunization it is actually developing resistance to disease producing germs or their toxins by introducing kill germs or germ substances to induce the production of specific antibodies so actually there is just a slight change vaccination is the introduction of uh, germs into the body so that immunity is developed in the body and immunization is how the resistance is developed by introducing vaccine or germs into the body now uh, immunization again some common infectious disease has been done in India on a mass scale with an attempt to cover the entire population that is why when you are little right from your birth within a few hours you are inoculated with the BCG vaccine and then it carries on until the you are 15 years old the last shot that you will take is when you are 15 years old so this is the national immunization schedule between 3 to 12 months DPT okay polio BCG okay 9 to 15 months measles vaccine just one single dose okay then you have 18 to 12 months uh, DPT that is a booster dose polio 5 to 6 years DT typhoid TAB 10 years tetanus typhoid uh, oh sorry I said 15 years it is actually 16 years tetanus and typhoid vaccine and even the mothers are given uh, you know uh, vaccines during uh, injections during pregnancy First, if the mother is immunized beforehand, just one booster dose of tetanus toxoid is put inside the body of the mother before four weeks before the expected uh, delivery. But if the mother is not non-immunized, what happens? Two doses of tetanus toxoid, the first dose between 16 and 24 weeks and the second dose between 24 and 32 weeks of pregnancy is given. Now children, these abbreviations are very, very important. DPT diphtheria pertussis which means whooping cough and tetanus dt means diphtheria and tetanus and bcg i already told you bacillus of calmet and gurey okay now antitoxins are also known as antibodies so toxin is a general term which is used for any poisonous substance that is produced by an animal or a plant or a bacteria for example snake venom that is the poison of a snake stings of poisons of scorpions when a scorpion stings you okay it um, injects some poison into the body sometimes even the poisons that is secreted by insects or even sometimes poisonous chemicals which are released by pathogens or germs which is growing inside the body so now these are toxins produced by the germs and antitoxin was the name given to the chemical substance which is produced inside the body when it uh, comes in contact with the entry of foreign poisonous substance okay and antivenines for snake bites are produced inside and bodies of animals i think i already told you about it in the previous upload okay like horses so nowadays the general term is used antibody instead of antitoxin so what is antibody antibody is a blood serum protein produced in response to the injected antigens now supposing someone has actually got a disease like diphtheria in such a case injecting pre-prepared antibodies from some other sources helpful for this what happens an antibody containing serum is obtained from the blood of horses rabbits in which the disease is artificially produced and that also in a mild form not in a serious form so treatment with such antibodies is known as passive immunization so at the moment when a person is suffering from that disease pre-prepared antibodies is put inside the body of the patient half kinds institute in bombay 
and other another institute at Kasoli are preparing several such anti sera now anti venine for treating snake bite is also based on the same principle that is antibodies are produced inside the um, sorry the anti venom is produced inside the body of the horse and then the serum the blood uh, the liquid part of blood is taken out and then it is injected so nowadays you must be hearing about blood plasma therapy in COVID-19 that is a person who has already suffered from COVID-19 and has recovered he will donate his blood and the liquid part of the blood will be extracted which contains antibodies which can fight against coronavirus and then that is injected into the body of a person who is suffering from COVID-19 that is known as plasma therapy you must have seen it in the news now antiseptics and disinfectants i think you must have heard these terms so these are used to prevent catching of diseases to kill the germs now what is an antiseptic now antiseptics are very mild chemical substances it is not uh, harsh okay when it is applied on the body it kills germs the substances are in a mild concentration so that the skin and the body is not harmed you have lysol these names are important of antiseptics children carbolic acid iodine benzoic acid mercury chrome boric acid to name a few and these must be in dilute solutions they are very good antiseptics so certain antibiotic creams also serve the same purpose you must have heard about borolin boroplast these are all antiseptic creams okay so please remember children dettol savlon listerine all these are also antiseptics but these are commercial names the actual chemical name which i just mentioned are lysol carbolic acid iodine benzoic acid so if you are to name an antiseptic please do not name dettol you will get wrong okay now next we come to disinfectants and now disinfectants are very strong chemical substances which are applied on spots and places where germs thrive and multiply uh, the commonly used disinfectants, please remember children the name of the disinfectants, Cresol, Phenol, Lysol, 40% Formalin, Lime, Body X Mixture, DDT. Okay. Now remember children, all disinfectants are very, very strong. They are not mild like antiseptics and they should not come in contact with the human skin. Otherwise, it will harm your skin. Strong heat and boiling also destroy germs and they are known as physical disinfectants that is long time back you know uh, when these um, uh, filters water filters various water filters were not invented people used to boil water so that the germs present in the water were destroyed now deodorants that you use children remember they are not antiseptic nor are they a disinfectant they only serve to mask a bad smell but most important remember children you must keep yourself clean so that no bad smell comes out from your body now this difference between antiseptics and disinfectants children uh, the first assignment for today you'll write down the difference between antiseptic and disinfectant now coming to antibiotics okay now antibiotics are chemical substances which is produced by microorganism that kills or inhibit inhibit means does not allow the growth of other microorganisms okay the first antibiotic was penicillin please remember one word answers and it was discovered in 1929 you don't have to remember the date this is not history so but so uh, the first use for treating any human disease was tried in 1940 even though it was uh, discovered in 1929 it took many years to try it out on any human disease now and then the term antibiotic was given much more later in 1942 now how was penicillin discovered you know there is a very interesting story alexander fleming okay he worked in a hospital in london and uh, 
he used to grow cultures of a bacteria which is known as staphylococcus okay in the lab so once he had gone for a holiday for a few days and then when he came back he found some you know fungus mold growing on it and when he saw which fungus it was he found out that it was penicillium and it had grown on the bacteria culture that he was growing and then he found out that the bacteria up to a certain radius they had died they did not multiply so he thought some substance must have spread from the fungus which killed the bacteria up to that certain distance so Fleming named this bacteria killing substance as penicillin that was how the first antibiotic was discovered so in the expectation of this substance to become an effective killer of disease causing bacteria so the experiments began and then it was tried on laboratory animals and it showed positive results without harming the animals and of course nowadays when you fall sick you do have especially if you have bacterial disease penicillin is used as an antibiotic to kill the bacteria inside your body and on humans the substance penicillin was first tried in early 1940s and it was found to be quite effective against different infections so it yielded good results um, treating a disease a sexually transmitted disease which is known as gonorrhea okay that is a bacterial disease okay this is a sexually transmitted disease the full form is sexually transmitted disease abbreviated form is std now sometimes the physicians or the doctors in those early days recommended using a combination of penicillin and sulfur drugs and the name given to it was pented self after that a lot of new types of antibiotics like streptomycin chloromycetin oreomycin ampicillin were discovered and nowadays it is being used against many infectious diseases now remember children antibiotics are used only against uh, diseases which is caused by bacteria okay and uh, antibiotics are also being used for the prevention of infections after surgical operations so that bacteria does not grow on it now sources of antibiotics from where do you get antibiotics the mold which produced penicillin mold or the fungus in the findings by Fleming was found to be penicillium notatum children this name is important it is a scientific name so you will underline after writing it and this fungus was similar to the one which grows on oranges lemons and other citrus food okay and then commercial production of penicillin has been largely done when we talk about commercial production we are talking about the production in huge amounts for use all over the, for so many people okay so then the commercial production was done from a related species that is similar to penicillin penicillium notatum that is penicillium chrysogenum and but nowadays it is also being produced synthetically in the labs now streptomycin is also one of uh, an antibiotic which is widely used and this is obtained from bacterium streptomyces children these names are very very important streptomycin from streptomyces the name of the bacteria now a large number of antibiotic and uh, sorry antibiotics are now made synthetically that is in the lab okay rather than from culturing microorganism that is making uh, in the lab is very easy so what are the uses of antibiotics the main use primarily means the main use is in medicine to fight infections especially caused by bacteria there are certain antibiotics which are used as food preservatives especially fresh meat and fish so that bacteria does not grow on it and spoil the meat and fish and some are used in treating animal feed poultry chicken are given a lot of antibiotics okay so that they do not have any internal infections and some antibiotics are used for controlling plant pathogens now plant pathogens means um, the germs which causes diseases in plants okay now finally we come to the sulfonamide group of medicines now since ancient times long time back uh, 
uh, man has been trying to discover and find out new medicines to cure diseases because you know people found out that they fell sick germs cause diseases so they have been trying to find new medicines so long time back people tried a variety of plant and animal products many of which worked well he also tried various chemical substances some of them which gave very good results so this is how chemotherapy was developed that is treatment by the use of chemicals in 1910 there was a drug called salversan which is an arsenic compound it was produced it killed the germs which caused the disease which is known as syphilis as well as sleeping sickness but it proved poisonous to the patient as well that is the patient also died so what was the use but in 1930s a group of chemicals known as sulfonamides were discovered which proved to be effective in various types of bacterial diseases okay so the, some of them were sulfur diazine sulfur nilamide and these are two names of sulfur drugs please keep the names of, of these sulfur drugs in mind now these are synthetic drugs okay that is they are produced in the lab by using various chemicals and they interfere with the metabolism of the bacteria okay and thus the bacteria is killed but nowadays remember children sulfonamides are rarely used they do not use it and if they are used they are used in combination with antibiotics for certain ailments or sicknesses so with this children we come to the end of this chapter i already gave you one assignment your next assignment is to do question number c short answer type differentiate between there are five differentiate between you do that and table number four okay so you'll submit it as usual day after tomorrow till then children stay safe god bless you